Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled HOA foreclosed on and sold our $460,000 home for $1,350 while I was deployed. We sued them and won. Being in the military and away from home is already a pretty stressful situation, but when your wife calls you while you are deployed on active duty and says that the house was foreclosed on and sold because she missed two HOA payments, your life becomes a damn mess. Well, that is what happened to me. While in Afghanistan, I received a phone call from my frantic, sobbing wife telling me that she was behind on two HOA dues so the neighborhood sold the home out from under us. The disgusting and appalling nature of this scenario was enough to make me call in to my superiors and put in an emergency request to return home. This is never something that I thought I would have to deal with, but there I was packing up my things and flying home on a whim because of this shady homeowners association. My wife explained some of the situation over the phone, but was crying a lot and sometimes hard to understand. I found out more information once I returned home. It had been a few days and she was packing up our belongings into cardboard boxes. It was clear that she had been crying on and off since we last spoke on the phone. All I could do was embrace her and tell her that we would do our best to fix the situation. The remorse and guilt that she felt was obviously written all over her face. We have four children, all under the age of seven. We purchased our beautiful family home about four years ago while my wife was pregnant with our second daughter. It was exactly what we wanted with all of the bedrooms, play areas and space that a big and growing family could ever want. I bought the home for just over $460,000. I was looking through the paperwork that we had been sent regarding the legalities of the house's sale, so my wife was actually behind on two HOA payments. That is right, just two. The grand total that we owed was about $1,100, so the psychopath actually sold my 3,500 square feet, $460,000 home for a measly and incredibly laughable $1,350 to some stupid company. I don't normally get overly emotional about things, but I actually shed a tear when I read this. My wife and I spent our entire savings on this home. It is completely paid for. How is this even possible? The worst part is, before we could even intervene in the process of them foreclosing and selling the home, the guy that bought it turned around and sold it for $150,000 not even a day later. What a hell of a profit, a hole. My next step was of course to find a lawyer to help us with this debacle. Boy, was that a challenge. Because in our state the HOA basically has all of the power. Lawyers don't like to take on these cases. One attorney even advised me to just call the HOA and cry. He said to literally beg for mercy, which was not something that I was inclined to do, but I tried it anyway out of desperation. I called the HOA board again and asked if there was any way that we could fix this issue without it being as big of a hassle as it has turned out to be. The woman actually sounded sympathetic. I'm not sure if this was the same woman or not. She said that it was simply our fault and there is no other way to look at it. If we had been more responsible and paid our dues, none of this would be a problem. This statement infuriated me. I understand that we messed up, but this was absolutely uncalled for. And we would have taken care of the problem if they had told us what was going to happen. Couldn't they at least have given us a warning? She said that they sent a letter after each missed payment, saying that there would be legal action taken if the fees were not paid. I told her that it should not be possible for them to do this and that it is borderline illegal. I was then informed by the snobby, condescending, weird girl on the other line that the HOA does have the right to foreclose on a home even over such a small amount of money. 
They claim that if they did not have the forceful means to collect payment, that no one would ever pay their dues. I tried to peacefully explain that my wife has to take care of everything while I am overseas on active duty and that there must have been some kind of mistake. The woman did not seem to have an understanding bone in her body and proceeded to repeat that they had the rights to foreclose and sell my home over two months of missed payments. I don't even think that a company would repossess a car after just two missed payments. Maybe three, but just two? The fact that they sold my house for peanuts is absolutely infuriating and now they are just going to tell me that that is what it is. I don't think so. Eventually, I was able to find an attorney that was willing to help us besides just telling us to back the HOA for the home back. He said that several years ago Congress passed the Service Member Civil Relief Act which was meant to protect overseas military personnel from having their homes non-judicially foreclosed upon. This was probably going to be the one saving grace in our situation because otherwise our home state does not give a damn what HOAs do to their residents. It took weeks before we could even get into a courtroom. In the meantime we've had to move into my brother's basement temporarily and have all of our furniture and other belongings in a storage unit. Thankfully though the continued sale on the home was temporarily postponed while we are currently taking the HOA to court. Who knows what the buyers would have done to it if people were allowed to move in. What a nightmare. We had made that house a home, our home, my wife hand painted my son's nursery, she would be devastated if someone were to cover it or if my daughter's custom designed princess room was destroyed. We waited and waited the worst four weeks of our lives, not knowing if we were going to have to find a new place to live and count my old home as a giant financial loss. I still had a hard time understanding how any of these things were even legally possible for them to do. It is actually so scary the amount of control and power these associations have over the residents and the homes that the people own. How can they just sell someone's house that is fully paid for right out from under them over some piddly little fees? Well, once we finally got into court, there was little sympathy from the HOA's lawyer and representatives. They continued to say that this is the only way for them to obtain past due payments, apparently by foreclosing on homes and putting military families on the street over $1,100. They said that the two months of delinquent payments put them behind on caring for the neighborhood, which I call BS. Thankfully, we had something in our back pocket. My lawyer was quick to point out that I was deployed overseas to Afghanistan at the time. This brings up the Service Members Civil Relief Act, which disallows for HOAs to do such ridiculous things like selling a home on the front steps of a court office building for 2% of what the house is actually worth. The judge and the HOA and their attorney seemed to go in circles for several minutes about what they were going to do but at the end of it all though the judge saw in our favor and awarded us the house back. There was no fighting the act that said they cannot foreclose on homes of active and deployed military personnel. This was truly a beautiful day and now the HOA gets to go through the trouble of paying for the undoing of the deed and bill of sale. Which according to my lawyer was going to be a giant pain in the butt for them. Maybe they will think twice before foreclosing and selling a home all in a 10 day time period. My family and I were happy to move back into our beautiful home and now my wife and I pay the HOA dues up front once a year now so that we know there is no way that a mistake like that one can be made again. The HOA continues to be annoying about every little thing but at least I have my house back. And wow, ripe stars, I gotta say I am very happy for the soja and his family that they got their home back. But still, that is such a ridiculous situation. And deployed soldiers already have so much to deal with, they really don't deserve to be entangled in all this HOA BS. In situations like these, you would really hope that someone in the neighborhood knows about this story and then goes to a large newspaper or TV channel to make this public and get the HOA in serious trouble. Anyway, if you still enjoy the HOA stories, then I would really appreciate it if you could also post some star emojis in the comments if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your help is very much appreciated.
And the next one is titled Don't Steal From Me. So my parents bought an amazing house on a lake about five years ago. The people who owned it before are the kind of people who are so wealthy they don't even know what they own and did not notice when things went missing. My parents bought the house fully furnished and with all the water sports stuff included. So the summer after they bought the house, they noticed that the canoe and kayaks would be moved around the dock randomly. He did not really care if neighbors used that stuff, but after he had to replace a kayak pedal for the second time, my dad decided that he was just going to buy all new equipment and lock the good stuff in the shop down by the water, instead of just storing it on shore slash the dock. Well, he bought four nice kayaks and a new canoe and we were out on the water before long. It only took a couple of days for a neighbor to come knocking at his door asking where the new kayaks were. My dad realized that her family was the one using and probably losing his stuff, so he informed her that the new equipment would be for family only. But her and her family were free to use the older stuff, just know that my dad would not be replacing the pedals anymore. This really pissed her off and she whined and complained and my dad being the overly generous sucker that he is, did not resist his offer to let her use the old stuff, but thankfully did not relent on the new. Well, the next day the older canoe and both kayaks were gone and a quick ride on the boat showed that the neighbor had just taken them to her property. Apparently being told that she could use them meant that she could have them. So dad took them back and now they have been safely locked away since. I think we have used them twice since then. And the next one is titled Friendship Ruined. Background, my husband and I had to move in with his grandparents, GP, during the virus pandemic when I lost both my jobs and my husband's work contract ended. It worked out well. They are in their 70s, we are late 20s and we jumped in with helping them around the house, picking up groceries since they are high risk, yard work and long overdue deep cleaning. They even let us bring our dog and both cats. Wonderful, amazing people. While we were looking for jobs, we still helped with bills and now that we both work again and are looking at buying a house, things are still wonderful amongst us all. Now, during lockdown, we ran errands for them and a lot of their friends, mostly neighbors, also seniors and high risk, never took payments for gas or any extras. We only accepted money for groceries because we could not afford 10 family worth of groceries on our savings. One of these families lived about 15 minutes away and were GP's old neighbors of 20 plus years. They remained friends throughout the last 7 years or so of not being next door and often talked on the phone or saw each other. We will call them Karen and Bob, CB. And yes, by the way guys, that is Karen with a C. I've never seen this before. Anyway, CB, they seem pretty normal, always grateful when we would drop off groceries, even understanding when the stores were out of certain things or specific brands. Bob does not really do or say much. This problem actually started a month ago when GP decided they wanted the driveway and sidewalks pressure washed. Papa showed me how to use it and I fell in love with it. It's nothing fancy, just a basic model pressure washer, but it was so satisfying. It took me two days to finish the driveway and I offered to do a lot of the neighbors too that I had met and made friends with when I dropped off groceries. I was only working one job, had a lot of free time and it made me feel needed. Most of the time they would bring me out a snack and drink and we would chat when I took a break from the Florida heat. It was great. Enter CB. Karen and Bob were scheduled to come over for dinner. I was finishing up a house a few doors down the street when I saw their car coming and waved, finished up the job and rolled the washer back home. I showered and we all had dinner when Karen asked why I had been working down the street. I basically told them I just like doing it. I thought nothing of it when she remarked that their driveway could use a good washing. I agreed to do it on my days off over the course of a week or two, but I sleep in so I would get a late morning start. She said that was fine. Next day 8am I'm at work when C calls. Where are you? Me, I'm at work, is everything okay? C, I thought you were going to wash our driveway. Me, I am, I'm off in two days and I will get started on it then. C, oh okay, I guess that's fine. I hang up mildly confused. Two days later, 8am, another call, C, where are you? Me, in bed, I worked till 2am last night, my alarm is set for 10, I will be there by 11. C, 
You said you would watch the driveway today. Me, and I will. I'll be there about 11. C. Oh well, I was hoping you would get started early. Me, I can do 10, but I'm going back to sleep now. C. Fine. So I go get up earlier, eat and haul the washer up a ramp into the truck and head off to CB house. Now Karen and Bob have a huge driveway, one of those upside down you have loop ones, that is double wide for two cars and it is long. I am there for about 3 hours, it is about 97 degrees outside and climbing, 100% humidity and I go through my water bottle. Also I turn off the washer and knock on the door and ask to fill my water bottle. See, you did not bring water? Me laughing because it is Florida and I think she's joking. Uh no, I did it just because it's really hot and I'm out. Can I fill it up with some ice water? See, visibly irritated. I guess, weird. So I go back out and work another couple of hours. I am probably about a third of the way done when I call it a day. I am hot, I am tired, my left hand hurts from clenching the trigger, she is being weird about water and I am hungry. So I go unhook the hose and start loading the washer back up when she comes out. See, where are you going? Me, home? I will be back in a couple days when I have my next day off. See, no, you need to finish. Me, um, I'm sorry, what? C. You need to finish my driveway. Me. I will. I just cannot finish it today. It will take me another 10 hours or so to finish. C makes a fuss, but I am adamant that I am leaving. I need to eat, rehydrate and the washer is almost out of gas anyway. Keep in mind, I am not a professional. I am not a company. I don't have employees or a partner in business. I don't even have an industrial strength machine. I am just some bored girl with a small washer that thinks it is fun and does not mind helping people. And by the way, guys, if you are also sometimes bored and would like to handle some power wash tools, then I would highly recommend the game Power Wash Simulator on Steam, which is surprisingly fun if you ask me. Then again, I'm European and we are sometimes a little bit crazy about all these simulator games. Anyway, I should have stayed gone. I got a voicemail the next day at work saying how CB are both unhappy that their driveway looks have finished blah blah blah. Then the next day C calls and texts me multiple times which I ignore other than to say I'm at work, cannot talk, I'll be there tomorrow. My phone starts ringing the next day at 7.30 with Are you coming at 8? Please be here by 8am, don't forget the water. I call back. Hey C, there is a thunderstorm right now that is supposed to last most of the day. If it clears up I will come over for a while, but I'm not doing it in thunder and lightning. C, you promised you would come today, the driveway looks awful. Me, I'm sorry, but it's not safe to be out there with a pressure washer in a thunderstorm. C, I expect you to be here tomorrow then, at 8. Me, I work tomorrow, I can come the day after. C has the bright idea that I call off work because she hired me to do her driveway and I have not finished it yet. I say no, I'll be there in two days. Q, two more days of passive aggressive voicemails and messages, but I show up with a cooler of ice water and food, work another five or so hours with her peering through her windows at me anytime I turn the washer off. It is loud as hell. There was no friendly chit chat, no drink or snacks offered, not that I expected it, but still. The only talking we did was when I took a break to eat lunch, she opened her door long enough to ask what I was doing and if I could not sit on her porch steps. It was the only shaded place to sit, so I sat on my tailgate in the sun and scarfed down my lunch. I packed up that day with about 4 more hours of washing to do, again huge frickin driveway versus tiny little washer, I get home exhausted and GP asked if I have a second to chat after my shower. Apparently CB had called them multiple times saying I was being lazy and just sitting around her house and she just wanted me to finish her driveway and leave. It took me almost a week to get back over there. I received constant texts and calls about how I was slacking, that I was a bad person for saying I would help poor old people and then leaving them to finish such a laboring task and the like. I finished the driveway in one shot, did not speak one word to C and only spoke to Bob to tell him I was finished and return his garden hose. Never even said thank you. 
I went home happy to be done, chalk it up to a lesson learned and just avoid CB when they come over, we are moving out soon anyway. Bob and Papa were really good friends and Mimi and Karen were really good friends as well. Who cares if they did not like me? Well, remember how I said GP are just super amazing people. They cared, they cared a lot that I was giving up my days off, coming home exhausted, being used and lied about. So one day they were going to have lunch at CB house when C met them out front and lamented on her driveway being full of brown spots I had missed and she demanded they make me come back and fix it and how I hadn't pressure washed the porch or the steps or the house. It just looked horrible to have a half cleaned driveway and a dirty porch and house. Papa knows I pride myself on my work, paid or not, I am OCD with the washer, that is why I like it so much. So he asked her to see the spots I had missed and she starts pointing out brown rocks. Brown rocks in the concrete of her driveway. She really thought that pressure washing the rocks would make them match the concrete and clearly I was too lazy to do it right. I did not get exact words from GP but Karen had a meltdown about my husband and I being leeches on them which landed them in an argument that ended both friendships, lunch being cancelled and the end of the story or so I thought. This was all a month ago but I am writing this now because CB have both reached out to me and GPs. Not to patch things up or apologize or even say thank you, they want us to pay them because their water bill went up because I used their water hose to run the pressure washer. The only response they got was a written out receipt from me for my hourly rate at my current job times the number of hours I was there for the driveway and had spent picking up their groceries and running errands, a rental fee for the washer per day, the total of gas I had spent running the pressure washer and from the beginning of my grocery slash errand runs for them to the last day I was there with the note at the bottom, I will pay up when you do. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.